This is the One X Player Mini. It's a handheld gaming PC. And when I say PC, I mean a full-fledged PC. It has Windows 11 preloaded, 16 gigs of RAM, Radeon graphics, it's kind of insane. And it's fairly comparable to the Valve Steam Deck. And a lot of people are looking at devices like this right now because the Steam Deck is super back-ordered, availability is scarce. However, this comes in at roughly twice the price of a top-tier Steam Deck. So it has to kick major, major butt in order for it to be worth it. In the past week, I've spent a lot of time with this thing. And today I'm gonna to tell you everything you Need to know about it, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and whether or not I think the price is worth it. Before we continue, special thanks to Guardio for sponsoring today's video. Guardio is an extension that automatically keeps you safe and secure whenever you browse online. Web browsers store our most sensitive data, from messages to banking info to login credentials, all of which can be compromised in an instant unbeknownst to us. Unlike traditional apps that only remove threats once they're on your device, Guardio acts as a first line of defense to detect threats before they reach your browser and cause harm. But I don't need that, Kyle. I'm not a web browsing noob like my parents. Sure, but the fact is, is that a lot of bad stuff can still happen regardless of your browsing habits. For example, I was a little shocked when Guardio told me about 10 different information leaks with which I had associated accounts, and that was just from one of my email addresses. I changed all of those passwords immediately. You might be surprised what Guardio digs up on you. Add their browser extension from the Chrome or Edge store, and a free security scan will detect existing threats found on your browser. You might want to sit down for that part. And, and for your own safety, I would suggest doing this sooner than later. After the scan, you get a seven-day free trial to remove all existing threats and enable real-time protection. A single Guardio account also lets you protect up to five family members, which should give you a break from being the IT support in your family. Click the link in the description to start using Guardio now, and browse safely, my friends. All right, we're gonna start off with specs. And like I mentioned earlier, this is rocking Windows 11, comes preloaded. We have an AMD Ryzen 7 5800U. It's an eight core, 16 thread processor. It's actually an SOC, so we have integrated graphics on here. Radeon RX Vega 8 graphics to be exact with eight cores. So no discrete graphics on here, which means you should temper your expectations according to that. And we'll talk about performance thoroughly in just a bit. But uh, compared to the, uh, the Valve Steam Deck, the Steam Deck also has an eight core SOC on it, but it's rocking the newer RDNA 2 architecture on its integrated graphics. So I would imagine that apples to apples, the Steam Deck is probably gonna perform a tad better than this device. Of course, I don't have a Steam Deck on hand with me right now. I've been having uh, issues trying to get one myself, but we are running it at a lower resolution. It's a seven inch IPS display at 1280 by 800. So that lower resolution should allow us to hit some higher frame rates than if we were on like a full HD screen, like a 1920 by 1080 display, for example. We have 16 gigs of LP DDR4X memory at 4266, running at a pretty decent speed there. 512 gigs, that's the model that I have. It's a PCIe Gen 3 NVMe M.2 SSD. I would suggest at least going for the one terabyte. You can configure this all the way up to two terabytes. 512 gigs is just not enough. I mean, I think I installed Forza 5 and Warzone and right there, half of my capacity was already gone. So I would definitely suggest at least a one terabyte. You get Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0. It does have a gyroscope sensor. So for games that support it, you can you know move the device and the game will respond in real time. It has a 12,450 watt hour battery, which sounds pretty impressive, but we'll talk more about battery life uh, in a moment. Um, it's for, for the record, spoiler alert, it's not great. Uh, and then the exterior, just talking about the exterior, like I said, a seven inch screen, 1280 by 800. It's a 60 Hertz display, 10 point multi-touch. So it is a touch screen, which is really handy on a handheld device like this. So that's the same resolution and refresh rate as the Valve Steam Deck, just for comparison. The body itself is super comfortable. Uh, I would say that it's actually pretty thick compared to something like a, a Nintendo Switch. And sorry, my autofocus isn't all the best right now. Uh, it's about twice as thick as a Nintendo Switch, I would say on this portion and the grips make it even wider, uh, but I like the grips. These are much beefier, more substantial. They feel a lot more ergonomic in the hand than something like the Switch, which is just a wall, basically, super flat. Uh, this feels really good and comfortable in my hands. I have average size hands, and I think this will fit most people pretty comfortably. I could hold this thing for hours on end without any kind of fatigue as well. It is hefty, it's a lot heavier than the Switch, but not to the point where you feel like you gotta put it down after half an hour or an hour of gaming. The joysticks are great. I really like the joysticks. Everything is very well built. Uh, just, I guess, to touch on that, the, the actual build quality of this is top notch. This is on par with the Nintendo Switch. It feels like a premium product. Uh, there's no like wiggle or wobble in, in any of the buttons. Uh, everything feels really solid and tactile. The joysticks I like because they're, they're not super short. 
I'd say that they're a couple millimeters taller than the sticks on the Switch, uh, and that just gives you a bit more control. It doesn't feel like, uh, you know, you have that PSP effect where it's just super close to the body. They do click inward, so you get game functions there. Positioning of the left stick, I think, is spot on. Like, this feels super comfortable. The right stick, I wish, was a little bit higher. I think it's a little too low for my liking, so when I'm gaming like this, uh, I usually have to put my thumb a little bit too low, lower than I would like to, especially if, if I have to move down. Then it feels like I'm really stretching that thumb. Uh, your mileage may vary, of course, based on your hands and stuff, your fingers, um, but I think this could be maybe half an inch higher and it would be perfect. Um, it's not a, a deal breaker in my opinion, but something to watch out for, especially if you plan to play games on this thing where you're utilizing the right joystick a lot. It is a little bit low for my liking. The D-pad similarly is a little bit low. I feel like this isn't as big of a deal because you don't use the D-pad as much, unless you're installing like a bunch of emulators on here that use the D-pad, uh, but it feels really good. Uh, like I said, all the button presses feel super tactile, really solid, no wobble or, or cheap feeling uh, elements at all. We've got a number of buttons on this side of the device as well. This one up here is kind of like a back return button. So let's say you're like in a Windows menu or something like that. You can just hit this to go back. Well, it's supposed to go back. This was working previously. Oh, maybe it's because I'm not in the right mode. Hold on, let me try this. Okay, uh, I, was, I was in the wrong uh, input, which I'll, I'll explain in just a sec. Uh, so yeah, that's your return button. And then we also have a uh, back to desktop button. So whether you're in a game or you have a bunch of windows open, a browser, you hit this button and you go straight back to desktop. So let's just open up Edge really quick. You're doing your thing. Hit that button, and sorry for the glare, it's, it's kind of awful in this room, hard to avoid. But yeah, it brings you straight to the desktop, and if you hit it again, it opens whatever window that you were previously uh, using. So that's really handy, and that works well. Uh, we have a start button over here, it's got the three lines, very similar to like an Xbox, you know, uh, an Xbox start button, so you use that mostly when you're in game. You have the uh, A, B, X, Y buttons here, I think the button placement is fantastic, they feel excellent, uh, and no complaints in this area. And then we have two little buttons right here, underneath the right joystick. The first one is your keyboard prompt, uh, which does a couple of things. If you just tap it once, it brings up the on-screen keyboard. And the keyboard is okay. I mean, I wish there was some tactile feedback. I mean, when you press it, when you click, uh, it makes a little click noise if you have volume up. But apart from that, there's no actual tactile feedback. That would be really nice if it was like capacitive somehow, um, but uh, it's not. So not the most tactile, and it is also kind of hard to, to use in my opinion. Like I have to stretch my thumbs inward a lot just to type something uh, you know, with, with relative efficiency. You can actually resize the keyboard like I'm doing here, but it's still, I don't know. You have to have really big hands in my opinion in order for this to actually be uh, usable. So what I usually end up doing is just using the mouse cursor to, uh, to kind of click, which isn't the most ideal. It's a lot more comfortable, but just not super fast or efficient. Kind of feels like I'm on a, you know, on a, using a remote control on a TV. It gets the job done, but it's a little slow. Now, if you hold that keyboard button down for three seconds, you'll hear a little chime, and that actually switches the input selection for the device. So we just went from keyboard and mouse input to the gamepad controls. So if you jump into a game, you're gonna wanna uh, switch over to the gamepad so that you can use the ABXY buttons and the joystick the way that they're intended. And when you're in desktop mode or browsing around the internet, things like that, then you're gonna want keyboard and mouse so that you can uh, that you can use the joystick still for scrolling, the left joystick for cursor movement, and that sort of thing. Just below the keyboard button is a little button to toggle turbo mode on and off. So with turbo mode enabled, the fan ramps up to a higher RPM, it keeps temperatures cooler, you get a bit more performance, but if you're trying to be discreet or if you're in a really quiet environment like a library or something like that, you don't want to disturb people around you, you can turn turbo mode off, the fan will ramp down, temperatures will increase and you might lose a little bit of performance, but it becomes whisper quiet uh, so that you can just game or whatever discreetly. You also get two front facing speakers, they're the little orange guys here at the bottom of the device and they sound fine. They're not gonna impress you or blow your socks off by any stretch. I wish they were a little bit louder and I wish they sounded a little bit better, but you know, they, they, they do what they're supposed to. They allow you to hear in-game audio uh, or whatever audio um, is coming out of this device if you're not using headphones or something like that. On the top, we have our triggers and bumpers. The triggers and bumpers, these are my favorites. This is my favorite physical part of the device. The triggers feel so good. Uh, there's a lot of throw to them. They actually have a, a decent amount of travel. They're super comfortable, very ergonomic. As far as other handhelds go, they blow all the competition away in terms of uh, just how these feel and how they respond. They're, they're super responsive as well. The bumpers feel good. Obviously, they have a much shorter travel because they're bumpers, but the triggers, uh, they just feel really good in games that, uh, that utilize them, like racing games or uh, shooters. On the top of the device, we have some I.O., including two USB 3.0 ports. One's a Type A, which you can connect like a mouse or keyboard to. So yes, you can actually wire a keyboard and mouse up to this if you don't want to use the gamepad, which works perfectly fine, in my opinion. It, it works great. Uh, I played some Doom with keyboard 
keyboard and mouse on this thing and it was great. Much better than the gamepad in my opinion, but that also kind of defeats the purpose of having a handheld device. Uh, it no longer really becomes portable at that point, but it is something that you can do. There's also a type C USB 3.0 port, which uh, does have video uh, signal that, that it can carry. If you want to output this to uh, an external monitor, you can do that. However, because this is a 1280 by 800 screen, it's going to look kind of funky on like a 1920 by 1080 panel. It's the one reason I wish this had a 1080 screen. There, there is a 1080 version of this exact model, but the trade-off there is that your frame rates are going to be a lot lower uh, and you could scale it down to 1280 by 800 and play at that resolution. But if you're stretching that out on a 1920 by 1080 screen, it's going to look notably worse and less sharp than it would on a screen that's running at that native resolution. Something to bear in mind there, we have a combo audio jack 3.5 millimeters and then uh, volume up and down. I wish there was mute. I don't know why there's no mute button on here. I, I like my mute button, but uh, the up and down volume rocker works fine. Little power button there. You get some ventilation at the top here as well. That's where the exhaust is. So all the hot air is being ejected out the top of the unit and all the intake is coming from the back. So uh, this is actually a really nice system because it's, it's positioned very far away from, from both of your hands. So you don't feel any kind of heat when you're gaming on this thing. Even under load after two hours, you feel no heat whatsoever. It doesn't make your palms sweat or anything like that because it's further away from the hot spots on the device. And the cooling system is actually quite effective as we'll take a look at later. Last thing to point out here on the outside is you get another USB-C port at the bottom of the device, which gives you options for charging. If you want to charge from the top or the bottom, you have your pick of the litter there. It's really nice. Uh, everyone has their preference and sometimes it's, you know, it's just situational based on uh, the, the kind of environment that you're gaming in. Um, so it is nice to have that option to charge from the bottom or the top. Uh, but let's go ahead and crack this thing open. Speaking of the cooling solution, let's take a closer look at what's under the hood exactly. All right, let's crack this guy open. I actually had to run to the hardware store really quick to get a screwdriver that was skinny enough to get into these deep little holes because my iFixit screwdriver is just a little too thick. So uh, we're doing a double zero. Well, this is a double zero here. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five screws that we got to do undo from the back. Okay, I think it just pops off like so. Yeah. Huh, am I missing something here? Maybe I gotta remove this first. Aha, oh shit. why is it on? Bro, I thought I turned you off. I must have accidentally hit the power button. Shut down. The top comes off very easily. Ah, oh, two more screws here. No wonder it wasn't coming off. <laughs> my bad. Got a little too antsy there. There we go. Guessing more at the bottom. What is this, tape? Feels like there's tape here. It's sticky. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Definitely warranty voided. Okay. It's like they really don't want you going in this thing. They've made that clear. I will not listen. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's interesting. There's only one fan. On the uh, the website, it said it was dual fans, but okay, maybe maybe it was dual fans for the uh, for the non mini for the full size version. And honestly, it's probably a good thing that there's only a single larger fan as opposed to two smaller fans because that probably keeps it a bit quieter. Uh, the larger the fan is, the lower the RPM it has to spin at, and so it doesn't make as much noise. So that's probably a good thing. Heatsink at the top again. That's where it's exhausting the hot air. Uh, we have a Wi-Fi card right here, and there's our battery. And unfortunately, they have hidden the M.2 SSD, making it. Uh, notably more difficult to access. So you can you can swap it out. We're not gonna do that today. More trouble than I wanna get into right now. But I believe it's right under this metal plate right here. I can actually see uh, part of the M.2 slot right there sticking out. So uh, yeah, there is a way to do it. Just uh, it requires a little bit more work than, than you might like. Looks like you gotta remove the fan first and then the Wi-Fi card and then you can access the uh, the, the SSD. We get a closer look at the trigger mechanisms. They seem very triggery. And obviously our SOC is positioned directly underneath the fan for the most heat dissipation possible. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Pretty neat how they have this all packaged together. I just wish the M.2 drive was a bit more accessible. And now for my favorite part of the review, and probably yours too, gaming and performance. That white number at the bottom is the current frame rate, so you guys can keep an eye on that as I play. So we're gonna start off with Rocket League. All right, I have to remember how to play this game. So any kind of like driving or racing game on this, I think that's one of the genres that does the best on this device with this particular gamepad, or with gamepads in general, right? Games like Rocket League, Forza, Project Cars, those are some of the most fun games I've played on this device so far. Uh, that and platformers, but we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. By the way, we're getting actually pretty solid FPS right now. 70 to 80 FPS, not bad at all. See, our temperatures are pretty good too. 61 and 62C on the CPU and integrated graphics respectively. We are getting at the native resolution, by the way, 1280 by 800, and that is not it's not the goal that we wanted. On this device, I would say Rocket League is a five-star game. Five being the most playable and enjoyable, and one star being, oh God, let's never try playing this. 
game on this device ever again. This game feels really natural to play on this device and all the controls are working flawlessly. All right, Doom Eternal, native resolution, high settings. I'm gonna do really horribly here. Ah, getting around 50 to 60 FPS. Oh, look at that. So I've been using keyboard and mouse for shooters for, for many years now. So using any kind of gamepad joystick configuration for a shooter like this is, is not really my cup of tea. I do, I do horribly and uh, it's, not, it's not the most enjoyable for me. Some of you guys are really good with a gamepad when it comes to games like this, uh, but I am not. So just, just bear that in mind. If you're like, oh, I, I can't wait to have the power to play CSGO in the palm of my hand, but you're not really used to playing shooters on a gamepad, like like me, then uh, you may be sorely disappointed. Next, we're in Witcher 3, but uh, before I actually test this out, I forgot to give Doom a rating. I would give it a two-star rating, uh, just mainly, this is purely subjective. These are subjective ratings, guys. I would say a two just because I, I just, I can't play shooters with uh, with, a, with a gamepad. I'm a, I'm a gamepad noob when it comes to those types of games, so uh, not very playable for me. But a game like this, Witcher, Platformers, whether it's 2D or 3D platformers, just like racing games, they really shine on this device. You don't need super precise aim or anything like that, although I may still get effed up here by all these wolves. Oh no. Ah, yes, okay. It's telling me to flee. It's like, bro, you suck. You should run away. By the way, we're getting around 40 to 45 FPS at the moment. It's about where we're at. And it's, it's very playable. It's not buttery smooth, but it's smooth enough. Okay, yeah, we, I get it, okay, I'll run away a little bit. I'll run away. Run, you fool. Just kidding, come here, biatch. Ha ha. Really screwed the pooch on that one, damn it. I forget what settings we're at, let me double check. Oh yeah, that's right, we're at medium settings. We're pretty much at medium settings. Uh, the reason why it's not highlighted is because I turned V-Sync off. Once you turn V-Sync off, it goes into the custom preset or whatever, but um, uh, yeah, we're at medium settings. I'm getting uh, around 40 to 45. When I was playing earlier uh, in some less busy areas, it was hitting around 50, 55, uh, 60 if I'm lucky, but um, no, no real dips below 30. So it keeps it pretty smooth and, and consistent throughout the gameplay. I will not flee. Never give up. Never surrender. There we go. Ooh, noise. That head flew so fast there was ghosting on it. There is a bit of ghosting on here. For super fast paced games, you will see a bit of ghosting, but uh, it's not gonna detract you from playing. All right, we've made it to daylight. And as you can see, our frame rate is still holding up anywhere between 45 and 50 FPS, despite there being a lot more textures to render, more complex shadows. Uh, just busier scenes going on overall. These frame rates are super playable and the controls work fantastic for this game, uh, which is why I'd give it a five star rating on this device. And there's just something magical about being able to play The Witcher 3 anytime, anywhere on a handheld. Just look at Geralt's hair, so majestic. Hey, cut that out, I'm filming here. Forza 5. Probably one of my favorite games to play on the One X player so far. I think mainly because it's it's so trigger based and the triggers just feel so good on this thing. The game looks fantastic. We're at medium settings right now. Getting anywhere between 50 and 60 FPS, which is solid. Very, very solid. More solid than my driving skills. I should have also mentioned earlier that there are vibration motors inside of the unit. So uh, depending on the game, if you crash into something or if you get hit, uh, the device will rumble. It's so immersive. Occasional dips below 50 FPS, but I don't really notice it. Honestly, as long as it stays well above 30, I'm, I'm a happy camper. But that does not mean I condone camping in any game. This game easily gets five stars on the One X Player Mini. Easily. Easily. 6.9 stars if I'm being generous. And here we have Overwatch. Overwatch. Yes, another first person shooter. That uh, is, is not, again, not my favorite on this device, but you can do it. You can do it, and if you're a junk rat and you just spam bombs all day, you don't need to be super precise. So that's something. Over 100 FPS right now. We're at medium settings. Native resolution, just buttery smooth. Obviously we can't take full advantage of that just because, you know, 60 hertz screen and all, but I can still appreciate a high frame rate. We could probably get away with ultra if we wanted to, but uh, I'd rather keep the high frame rates than have the game look an iota sharper. I'm just, I just can't aim. I just can't aim with this thing. I'd need to play shooters on this thing for, you know, maybe a couple days before I really got the hang of it. And I was back in the groove of shooting with a, a joystick. The last thing I wanna show you guys is an emulator, just to drive home the point that this is in fact 
a full-fledged Windows PC. So you can do all kinds of fun PC Windowsy things, like install emulators. This is our PCS3. It's a very popular PlayStation 3 emulator. And you can see I've installed Skate 3 on here. I've got the Skate 3 ROM, and I already configured it. I actually couldn't get it to work with the gamepad for some reason. Emulation can be tricky, but I was able to connect my Xbox controller successfully. So I've been playing the game with that. Oh, I'm a little, I'm a little rusty. There we go. Getting around 45 FPS here, thereabouts. Oh, and by the way, I'm probably gonna have to plug in the power cable soon because I've just been running on battery this whole video uh, while filming this. And uh, I've been playing for about an hour and a half, maybe hour or 35 minutes. I actually did a full gameplay test where I was just playing Witcher 3 for as long as I could until the battery just completely died. And I went for about an hour and 40 minutes. That's the battery life on this thing. It's not great. It's a little better than a gaming laptop, especially a high-end gaming laptop, which usually doesn't even last over an hour. But uh, you know, for being a handheld, I was I was kind of hoping for for a little bit more juice, you know, a, a little bit more playtime. Obviously, that's going to extend a lot if you're not just gaming. If you're uh, doing like video playback, which by the way, this thing does just just fine. I was watching uh, the boys earlier on Amazon Prime. That'll go for a good six, six and a half, maybe even seven hours. Oh, and by the way, when I was doing that, that gameplay test with The Witcher 3, I was at 70% brightness. So obviously you can get more mileage out of it if, you, uh, if you're if you playing with the lower screen brightness. But yeah, I would I would expect no more than two hours of gameplay on, on battery alone before you got to plug this thing in. And it's also worth noting that I was only able to charge this device with the included power brick charger, uh, the, uh, the wall adapter and the included cable. Uh, this will not charge with any of the power bricks any of the external battery banks that I have. It just isn't enough to drive this thing. Unlike the Switch, the Nintendo Switch, I can just plug in the battery pack and I'd be good to go for you know several more hours. Uh, that's not the case for this device, unfortunately. So if you do have to plug in uh, and you're running low on battery, you are gonna have to be close to a wall outlet. Uh, and that is, that is a big caveat, I think, for a handheld, right? It's definitely one of the bigger shortcomings of this device. And I think that's where we can sort of wrap things up here is that uh, this thing is pretty sweet for what it is. I mean, having the, the power of a PC, a full Windows desktop in the palm of your hand, you can do some cool stuff. Play PC games, run emulators, you can even stream games from your actual desktop PC. But it does face some challenges. One being performance isn't all that spectacular. I think it's adequate, but uh, you know, if you're used to super high face melting frame rates, you're definitely not gonna find that here. They're playable, but they're just not super impressive. And like I just said, I really wish the battery life was better. I feel like it just makes it a little bit less enticing for me to just grab this thing when I'm going on the go somewhere, uh, if I'm traveling, I'm just like, well, what's the point if I'm gonna have to be you know, strapped down or tethered to a, a wall outlet anyway? But I think the biggest caveat of this device is its price. At roughly $1,200 and you know, about double the price of a top tier Steam Deck, I, I, I don't know if I could justify it. In, in fact, I, I know I can't, it's just too pricey. I think maybe before the Steam Deck price was announced, it could have flown, but now there's just too much competition in this space and Valve's kind of owning it. Uh, the only downfall is that you can't really get a Steam Deck right now or you're just on a crazy back order. But once they iron out their manufacturing issues and uh, they fix their supply, it's, uh, this thing's gonna be a tough sell, as, as cool of a device as it is. It's just too pricey for what it is, especially given the competition that it's up against now. I feel like if they released uh, like a follow-up, you know, maybe with like newer RDNA 2 graphics that was more competitive performance-wise with the Steam Deck, they improved the battery life and made it a whole lot cheaper, then we'd really have something to talk about. But until then, this is uh, just a really fun, awesome toy for people who have a buttload of money to spend on cool gadgets. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think of the One X Player Mini. Any of you who own a One X Player, whether it's the Mini or the full-size version, I'd love to hear your thoughts. It's always nice to hear what uh, actual owners have to say, especially after they've been using a device or a product for an extended period of time. Please leave your comments down below. Toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I'll see you guys in the next video.